I sort of think international, which is to say I grew up in North Dakota eating roast beef, baked potatoes and corn, not very imaginative. So for me, my lunch might be something from another culture, like Mexican food, a burrito made with beans and jalapeno peppers, and there's nothing that says it can't be a little spicy. Um, my dinner might be an Italian pasta, but not covered with Alfredo sauce and all the cream and cheese and stuff, but it might have uh, oyster mushrooms, or which are made not from oysters, but they're mushrooms. Um, chunky tomato sauce, um, artichoke hearts, those kinds of things. The beauty about a plant-based diet is, is the sky's the limit. You go to the farmer's market every Sunday and you see just this bounty of choices that you have. It's astounding. And so, you know, I try to eat seasonally and, and, and locally the best I can. So this time of year, a typical breakfast might be uh, some whole grain steel cut oatmeal with some slivered almonds and some fresh blueberries and I add maybe a little flaxseed. Oatmeal uh, with fruit and a little bit of nuts for breakfast. Oatmeal. Oatmeal and fruit. And oatmeal is a great whole grain to start your day with. What I do personally every morning is oatmeal. And I will have a heaping bowl or two for breakfast. Oatmeal for breakfast, oats with fruits and cinnamons, and you can throw some crunchy hemp seeds in there. Fruit in the morning perhaps with some oatmeal, maybe an ounce of ground flax seeds. Throw some chia seeds on it, add some almonds or pecans. You've taken this oatmeal, which is healthy and maybe has four or five grams of fiber, and you've added another four or five grams of, of fiber from the almonds, another four or five grams with plus the polyphenols and antioxidants from the blueberries. You can chop up some dates instead of using sugar to sweeten it. I almost always will have old-fashioned Quaker oats. I think oatmeal is one of the best grains that we can eat. It is has very high in soluble fiber. It works almost like a Pac-Man going through your blood vessels and grabbing onto cholesterol and bad fats. So if you can get oatmeal into your diet on a daily basis, that's great. You're getting the protein and the healthy omega-3s from the almonds. And now you've turned this dish into something that contains as much fiber as the average American gets in a whole day. So I choose to eat a predominantly raw vegan diet. Uh, so in the morning, I'm eating nothing but fruits. I'm usually eating bananas or papayas or mangoes or dates. I would put in a breakfast meal about two bananas one medium papaya, one medium mango, and maybe four or five apricots. That would be a simple breakfast. What I eat for breakfast is a little bit unusual compared to a lot of people, but I eat vegetables for breakfast. And that's because I learned that all the people in the world, except for the United States, pretty much eats vegetables as part of their breakfast. It doesn't mean that's all I eat, because I'll eat starch too, but I always make sure that I have some vegetables for breakfast. Now, people that think that that's silly, or how could you eat cooked vegetables or salad for breakfast, and have a green smoothie, but try to get some vegetables in every meal. I will frequently get a green smoothie, not a juice, but a smoothie because I want it to retain the fiber. I have a big smoothie with vegetables and frozen fruit and food grade green tea and flax seeds and brewer's yeast and bananas and you know kitchen sink kind of smoothie and I have two pieces of Ezekiel bread toast and fat free hummus so it's a lot of breakfast but it gets me through morning exercise I exercise almost every morning yoga or running or gym or something go get a burrito that has beans and corn and rice and lettuce and tomatoes and fill it up and it's huge it weighs eight pounds two large salads now the way you know you have a big enough salad is you put it on the table and wait your, for your friends to walk in the room and if they go oh oh my gosh, you're not going to eat all that, you're probably okay. If they don't react with shock and awe, you need to get a bigger bowl. And then a bunch of steamed vegetables and perhaps a serving of some kind of complex carbohydrate, potatoes, rice, or beans. If you're still hungry when you're done with all that, you start over and have another salad. You know, people think of salad like this. I think of salad like in a big bowl for six, only I eat all of it. And then I'll have um, maybe black bean chili or a couple of sweet potatoes or vegetables and rice, something of that nature. Mid-afternoon, I have another kind of meal like that. And then six o'clock, I have another meal like that. Lunch and dinner, I don't really see a difference between lunch and dinner. Uh, having a salad is a great way to go. And you make your salad a main course salad. So the salad would not only be vegetables and greens, 
but it would include berries. It would include some nuts, especially walnuts. I throw beans and lentils on my salad, so when I make a salad for myself, it almost looks like I've made it for four people, and I will consume all of that. So that keeps me full. So I think you should have at least one of those a day. I always think of salads as part of your meal for lunch and dinner. The bigger the better. With, with starch in it though, with legumes, with chickpeas or kidney beans or a cut up sweet potato or putting rice in the salad, something like that to make the salad the meal and very, very satisfying. Putting fruit in your salad or just eat a bunch of potatoes like I do. That's my favorite meal is potatoes. Put in the air fryer, I make them into french fries. I could just eat potatoes all day and I do. And dinner? A soup, a stew, a chili, made in the Instant Pot, easy peasy, throw it in, push a button, done, over potatoes, over rice, and, and fruit for dessert. By the time dinner rolls around, that's when I'm opting for a lot of variety. So I'm going for large green leafy vegetable salads, okra, tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, corn. I add a lot of spices to my food. Uh, sometimes I'll cook up a sweet potato, sometimes I'll take some frozen peas and put that on top of a salad. I try and front load it with fruit and then back load it with a bunch of vegetables. With most meals, try to figure out a way to get your greens in. So if you're making pasta, throw broccoli in there. If you're making a salad dressing, I like to make salad dressings with no oil, so it's a whole food plant-based salad dressing, and I will actually throw kale in the blender along with mustard and vinegar and spices, um, seasonings to flavor the dressing, but you actually get some greens in your dressing. In, in the evenings, I, I take, I, I usually try to cook some grain, uh, like like quinoa or brown rice, and then a legume, like, like beans or lentils. Beans are great. There's a lot of studies that show that people who eat beans three times a day live longer, and you might say, well, I'm not having refried beans three times a day. Well, you don't need to. If you have tofu, that's beans. If you have edamame, that's soybeans. If you have lentils, that falls in that same group. If you have hummus made from garbanzo beans, it just doesn't look like a bean, but it's made from beans. So I, I want people to eat legumes, right? Beans, split peas, chickpeas, and lentils, right? If that means beans for breakfast, you know, like baked beans, great. If that means, you're like, I don't like baked beans, but have hummus for breakfast, right? Oh, I don't like hummus. Have some pinto bean dip, oh, I don't like, have some pizza, oh, I don't like pizza. But you just gotta find a way that's you know convenient, delicious, you know, that fits your taste buds, fits your lifestyle. But as long as you get legumes, I don't care how you're getting your legumes. At lunch, it may be some soup and uh, open face sandwiches, some with tomato on top, some with cucumbers on top. And it's uh, always with a little layer of hummus and a lot of greens on them. Hummus should be a food group because hummus is phenomenal and you can do all kinds of wonderful things with hummus and blend it with red peppers or blend it with some, make it for your kids. A meal that's really tasty and healthy. Uh, one of my favorites is my Buddha bowl that uh, my wife brings over to the office at, at lunchtime. There's a bed of quinoa uh, with a layer of, uh, of kale on it and then a, um, a uh, whole uh, uh, menagerie of steamed vegetables, uh, various types, and she makes up this lovely tahini dressing that we pour on there. And and I'm getting hungry just uh, speaking about it. My mantra is beans and greens and then I fill in my plate with color. And it's the best way to learn how to make a plate is it needs to look like a rainbow. If it's brown and your plate is basically white and brown, you're missing all the an antioxidants and phytonutrients that you should be consuming to help keep you healthy. So the standard American diet is basically a plate of brown or white food. So make it colorful.